Hey, this is a continuation of the previous uh, video on how to make your own custom layout keyboard. So here's where we left off. Uh, we had a nice little cheaters grid, ZXCV love. Um, but I did a few tweaks on it. I actually reduced the um, the angle on it. 30 degrees is what's default, and what shows up in here is uh, by default it's 15. Uh, but I, I changed it back. Um, there we go. Default is 15. We actually um, tweaked it to 30 since we increased this one by 15 and this one by 15. So uh, I've changed that to be 20 and I've moved the rotation point again. Just make sure the rotation point is exactly in the middle. And uh, that has, once we get this layout to where we want it, we click on raw data here. Normally you're here, click raw data, select all, copy. And then we go to builder.swillkb.com. And it's used to generate CAD files and it builds off of the keyboard layout editor. So we had our raw data here. Just paste that right in here. And uh, let's just see what it looks like to start out. So this creates only the switch plate layer. And uh, we can see we've got a little bit of a, a problem here. We can mess with that later. But you can see that it's cutting out the switch shapes. And these are paths uh, made for guiding tools, usually laser cutters or uh, water jet cutters, across materials. <clears throat> we can get these bits of information, that these files, by right-clicking and clicking Save Link As for the SVG file, the EPS, or the DXF. And different uh, services use different file formats. For our purposes, though, we're going to assume that we want a squared build or a rectangular build, uh, just for to simplify things a little bit. We'll go back here, regular swill builder, paste that in. We'll go MX plus Alps. This is just the shape of the hole that's being cut. Um, if you do cut on a steel plate, these shapes are okay. Um, However, they're a little bit too intricate if you cut on different materials. So if you're cutting into wood or plexiglass, there's usually a bit of, little bit of melting, a little bit of overburn. Um, I'd recommend cutting on these more simple shapes if you are going to cut out of something other than steel. But in our case, we'll do this MX plus Alps. Um, we'll do Alps fallback stabilizers and just see what comes up. So this is a switch plate and it would just be a piece of steel with these holes cut in it. These are our stabilizer holes. These are a little close to the edge. It doesn't look like a great thing. Um, also, we don't have much edge material here, so you would have to sit this into a, a custom case or something. Otherwise, we can do things to tweak it. Uh, stabilizer type, let me just change that so you'll, you'll see what that change looks like. Change this edge padding. Remember the bottom looked uh, real tight Top right, left, and the bottom will give it five millimeters of padding. And let's see what that comes up with. There we go. So we've added some distance on the bottom. It's a little more room for the stabilizers. In this case, the stabilizers are the um, uh, the updated stabilizers. But you can see we've added more room here. It's just generating these uh, scaled vector graphics and shapes. Uh, for you with your specifications. Let's set this to 6. No, actually, let's set it to 9. There we go. Let's see how that looks. There we go. So we've got much more room around the outer, outer outside. This is just for the plate, though. So we might even want to make... Uh, mount holes, which you actually can't until we select the case type. So let's select the case type. Uh, you have the option of making a poker, a 60%. It's going to put those 60% plate cuts on the side, and I'll just show you. Uh, it does depend on where your keys are. So you know, we can see we've got some incursions here. Uh, these are not an issue if you have regular size keys. So since we've gone grid up here, we don't have standard a standard spacebar size here. 
a lot of these holes are being absorbed by other things. So if you do a 60% build and tweak a few things, just make sure that those mounting holes are not covered by switch holes. Uh, but that's what that would look like. If you switch to a sandwich board, sandwich board is layered. So uh, let's do just a sandwich board. It's kind of an iterative process. You're just building one thing on top of the next, uh, literally actually in the sandwich board. This is the plate, and then underneath that plate is going to be a layer that has a cutout. And that cutout is going to be for USB wire or USB cable to pop in, uh, some something coming out of it, or your Teensy to mount surface mount right on the edge so that you take your cable and plug it right into the outside. A closed layer just to add a little bit of height for uh, the wiring. And the top layer, which is going to sit above the plate and be closer to the keycaps. So it's a little bit wider. Uh, a little more room for the key caps to come down into. Uh, you can see this little cutout here. That's actually just for this space right here. Uh, this space is also represented, but it's obviously loose. It's just going to float around there. And then the bottom layer uh, will be enclosed. But we can't really line those up without mounting holes. Let's give them 4, 3.5, and I think I did 9. Uh, mounting holes are a little weird, and the edge padding has always been a little weird for me. I always wind up messing around with it. So we can see we've got mounting holes here on the four corners. You can increase those the number of mount holes, and the holes go all the way through. So you would be lining these up with screws of a 0.35 diameter, 0.35 millimeters. Um, it does look a little sharp. You can do plate corners, give them a radius. We'll do a five millimeter radius. And we can see it's rounded. Uh, this hole's a little close to the edge. You might play around with the mounting hole distance just to get it a little bit closer. I don't like it being too close to the edge, but it also, you gotta watch out for the top layer. You don't want it to be too close to the, the keycaps on the top layer. So this is probably not bad. Uh, this small amount of space on a steel plate, a 1.5 plate, is gonna be just fine. So don't worry about that. Uh, but if you build out of some other material that might be a little bit more fragile, uh, keep in mind those edges, okay? So we are, this is starting really to take shape. Uh, the next thing and important thing is going to be kerf. Kerf is, um, it is the offset for the width of cutting tool. A little diagram here. So imagine you're trying to cut this board, um, this black board, at this red mark. This is your distance that you want to cut it up at. And in order to cut it at that distance, you make this blue mark. This is where you want that cut to take place. The tool that you have is this saw. The saw blade is this red thickness. So the thickness of the saw blade is going to be removing that amount of material from this board. So when you make this blue line, when this saw blade, when this cutter comes up and lines up right dead center on that blue line, it's actually going to cut to the green mark on both sides. So you're not going to reach your distance. You're going to be short. You're going to be short by half the distance of the cutting material or cutting implement. So when you have something like a laser cutter, it's basically how wide that laser is going to be because it's going to remove that much material. Water jet cutters are much tighter. They make much cleaner holes. Uh, if you're doing this on wood, it's, it, it varies from tool to tool. And you might have to mess around with it for a while. I'd recommend trying multiple different size kerf uh, switch holes just to make a plate with one switch hole that's this size, another with a little bit more kerf, another little more, a little more, and then cut that and then pop actual switches in and try it out. That's what I wound up doing. But for our purposes, we're going to be just assuming that we're running a, uh, we did 0.3, well, Let's just try 0 0.3. 0 0.3 is not even going to be noticeable, but it's going to adjust uh, where the, the edges need to be. So 0 0.3, it's adjusting this line so that when the laser cuts through or when the water jet cuts through, it the end of the material, the end of the cutting point right here, is lined up with this. So it moves the cutting implement a little bit in. So it moves that blue line a little bit in. Uh, 
to further exemplify that, we will change this from 0.3 to 5 whole millimeters. So if your cutting device had 5 millimeters that removed, everything smaller because when this cuts, it's going to cut to that actual size out here. So I hope that makes it a little bit more clear. It's still still kind of weird. Uh, but you can mess around with it so it doesn't really matter. The other thing to note is that uh, when you do, if you do decide to use the laser gist ordering, uh, it will reset your kerf, which is just fine because that's the kerf 0.15 millimeters. That'll be generated for um, for the files that are going to be sent over to them. And this is supposed to draw the, the switch plate and the next plates layer down, but the switch plate is really the only thing that needs to be steel. Um, and you can choose how many uh, or thickness, 1.5 is standard, and what type of material you want. So you can, from right here, place your order and uh, get measured by, cut, measured by cutting distance uh, how much that's going to be. And I have not used them yet. I am going to very soon. But if you wanted to get that plate and get things going, you could just click order now and get that plate and start playing around with it and see if it's something that you want to get the rest of the parts for and really lock it in as a design. Um, but from here, as I said, you can right click, save these files, and then you'll get the actual SVG file and you can mess around with it and make other tweaks. That's not really a big deal when you're uh, doing these things. Uh, not as big of a deal if you're doing things that are kind of square and regular but as we said earlier if you're doing something funky like this things get a little bit more interesting let's make sure we got this so in this case i'm just going to make key switches i want the key switch cutting path and the way i'm going to do that is set the switch type that i want stabilizers that I want and uh, since this cut a little bit over see how this cuts through that's going to break my uh, my lines so I want to oh, notice this over here too this is a little artifact of the rotation and we're going to fix that in uh, post-production along with adjusting this to fit an actual case shape but the first thing we need to do is make sure all our switch holes are intact so we're going to have to increase our edge width, edge padding, and it, it, it doesn't even matter at this point since I'm going to make a new edge and show you how to do that. Uh, kerf is important though, so I'm going to do 0 0.3, 0 0.4, I think it's 0.4. So this is basically my switch layer, and when I save this, I'm going to pull out the SVG paths and I'm going to drop them into GIMP, uh, a graphics program, and manipulate the paths so that we can get it to be, you know, a little bit of a better shape. I'm kind of looking at something, Let's see if I can do this, there we are, something like this, uh, no, like a straight line here like that and down it's kind of the center line about there so like like that um you can even you know make it squared on the edges or something like that just an idea of where you want to be with that full design and if you wanted to do like a split in the middle and have it pop up a little bit i'm not even sure if you're catching this uh, but if you want to do a split in the middle and have it pop up a little bit, then you can do that too. But let me get into uh, that in the next video, because that's editing SVG graphics is a whole other thing. <laughs> but the point is we want to get this file and save it so that we can mess around with it. And we'll pick up with that later.